So, hi guys, good morning. Um, welcome to this presentation. Just to look out here in the, in the audience, I don't see any Kingsters here, but do we, do we have anyone from Microsoft? We have a few people from Microsoft here. It's good. Any other companies around here? I guess we're mainly Microsoft today. So, um, and I guess most of you guys are also from the US then, so don't we, we don't have too many jet lag people. Also good. I mean, it's pretty good to be European because then at least in the morning you're okay, right? Um, so let's kick this off and talk about King and Microsoft. The topic of this presentation is why Candy Crush on Windows 10? I guess you all played it. Anyone here that didn't play Candy Crush? Oh, you didn't. You got a lot to learn, my friend. <laughs> so it's, it's a thing you need to do today. Learn how to play Candy Crush. So, well, the answer to that question for us is quite simple. We believe in the Windows 10 platform and we believe in Microsoft Store for, for casual gaming. When, it, when you think about it, casual gaming or gaming and Microsoft goes pretty much hand in hand. Um, Xbox is big, it's gaming, it's Microsoft. So we also believe that you know, with all the devices out there on Windows 10, Windows 10 and Microsoft Store has a huge potential for becoming you know, a major casual gaming platform. So my name is Alex, I work for K at King. I'm Swedish, so that's my accent, a little bit of Swedish. So if you don't understand me fully, you can just you know, shout out, right? And I've been at King for five years. I started in 2013 when Candy Crush pretty much hit every app store in the world and made a huge success, right? So I'm not a very techie guy, uh, so I, I prefer no, if you, if you don't do any of the really hard techie questions today, uh, I'm more of a casual gamer. I'm not a hardcore gamer, so this fits me perfectly. Actually, I prefer probably to play things like Sudoku. Um, not a very social game, pretty nerdy. So that's where I'm my kind of gaming sphere, right? And I've been heading up the uh, Microsoft partnership since 2014. So now I have two slides here about King. Those are the generic ones that I had to bring with me. Um, so King, we make great games. That's what we believe in. Uh, it's games that people will play all over the world. 2013, when we hit the market, we we saw that you know everyone suddenly turned from accessing um, online features on on uh, uh, computers to access it on mobile devices instead, and that when we really hit the market and it became such a a big success. So when it comes to King, we've been around for about 15 years now. I think we launched, you know, a number of numerous of hundreds of, of titles, right? Uh, some of our biggest franchises you probably all heard about, like the Candy Crush, uh, Bubble Witch, and Farm Hero, for example. I think we're about. I think this slide is slightly old. Uh, I think we're more than 2,000 people now. We continue to grow. We continue to recruit heavily. And we also recently started a studio here in San Francisco. So it's quite a happening company to work for, and it's, it's good fun. So when it comes then to Microsoft, what's interesting about Microsoft? Well, I'd say it's one of the top, 10, you know, top tech co companies in the world. And if you think about it, you know, it, it's such a huge entity in the whole world of, of tech and what gaming is, really. I've heard the number 600 million monthly active devices running on Windows 10 now. But from our perspective as well, it's extremely interesting to see that you know, all the other kind of devices that are out there, they're also running on, on Windows. So we believe this is, really has a, a potential to grow really big. And then the fact that everyone is in one or another way affected by Microsoft. We touched yesterday about you know, you have in dishwashers, in refrigerators, 
security systems, all of that is also many of them running on, on Windows. So we're all affected by it and most people probably has one or another opinion on it. And the fact that it's primarily professional usage, right? That's interesting. So what does King mean for Microsoft? What, that, what do we believe that King means for, for Microsoft? Well, one thing is that Candy Crush is a, is a well-known brand. It's a massive brand. It's, I normally say that it's probably the, the largest candy company in the, in the world. And it's extremely sweet, right? And for us, it's, it's casual gaming for the masses. When we uh, hit the market, you know, to that extent in 2013, we saw that everyone was playing Candy Crush and people even started connecting with each other in the streets. We heard about, you know, people on the subway in Hong Kong asking each other for, for lives to continue playing while they were in transit to work, etc. Then we've been able to largely monetize our user base. Uh, and we believe that we are one of the companies where our apps have been part of making people start you know, using stores and actually paying in stores, converting to be payers. Um, and, th and that reflects all stores. And I think we've had a, had a very good partnership with Microsoft in, in growing the monet monetization player base for Microsoft. So what we believe that we're doing is basically we're partnering with Microsoft to grow the ecosystem of, Win of Windows 10. And this is the fun part, because we actually see that this is happening. And then something we, we think that we're doing and think we should do is to gamify the desktop and all the other devices. We think that everyone should have a possibility to play games even when they might not, maybe they should be working, right? So I don't know if, if anyone knows where this quote is from. Yep, I see some people have seen it. It's from The Shining with uh, Jack Nicholson. And it actually makes sense. We think that, you know, if you could add that, you know, to your daily life to, yeah, maybe I could play a little bit of game. It's probably good for motivation. Perhaps you should have some kind of feature in, you know, for, for example, when you play Candy Crush or any other game that, you know, you see your boss coming down the, the, the hallway that you could just, you know, put it, push a bottom and you will just jump into Excel or something. That's some, uh, one of the features that we would like to see. So, casual gaming on Windows. When you think about it, it's probably always been there with us, right? Is there anyone here who never played this one? Did you play? You played it, right? Yeah, good. This is actually, you know, I, I needed a screenshot the other day, so I, you start playing. And you get hooked into these games. It's still a very good game. And here I'm, I'm on about, yeah, I made about 50% of the bombs or the mines so far. I, I think I was doing pretty well. Uh, then, of course, this one. And I understand that uh, Microsoft Solitaire is still a very big game. A lot of people playing around the world. Yeah, and this is, this is the frustration slightly after the other slide, the, the other picture that I showed you, when you realize that 50%, you know, then I do pretty well, but then you get up to 60%. That's where I just can't handle it anymore. You t start clicking away and you fail. It happens. So if we turn that question around then and ask, what does Microsoft mean for King? Well, one thing is extended reach. And if you look at the, the uh, player base that, or the user base that you have, you, we're talking about 600 monthly active users, right? But then also knowing that there are so many devices out there that are running on, on Windows that could potentially be Windows 10, that makes it very interesting. And when you, then when you think about it as well, it's, you know, this is not only a desktop. And if you launch on Universal Windows platform, you actually reach all the devices that run on Windows 10. And one of the things that you know, we've been thinking about is you know, the, the, the context of what is a, a mobile device. Uh, 
I have one of these surfaces that I normally carry around with me, and I, I bring it to the office every day, and I, I connect it to a, to a screen, a large screen, and to a keyboard and a mouse. And sometimes I wonder, what, why do I need such a big device for that? So one of the things that we're thinking is perhaps in the future, you know, this will be just smaller devices that you can actually also call from, add a function for, you know, calling your friends. That makes it, you know, another kind of mobile device. So for us, working with Windows is, you know, the opportunity of, of the reach, but also preparing ourselves for the future. Because we believe in, you know, Microsoft is a big company, it's been around for a very long time, and always comes back with very, very exciting products. So that's very interesting for us to follow. And then the quality of the platform. Our games are running extremely well on the platform. Uh, people play, they're happy, and they continue to play. It's very solid, the platform. So if we go back a little bit to when we started working with, with uh, Microsoft and, and we launched the first version of Candy Crush, um, we did it through a so-called tool. And for me, not being a techie, that was pretty much, you took an iOS app, you put it into a, a t the tool that, from my view, looked more like a washing machine, and then it came out to be a very good Windows app. And it worked really, really well. And uh, then, of course, we, s we, we saw the opportunity and started continued to work with this, and we did a native version with less dependency and also was a better, cleaner version, right? But it made complete sense for us. And then in 2015, we launched on Windows 10. So, let's see. We know that someone didn't play this game. Did you, anyone that didn't play this game then? Do you know about it? This is the Candy Crush Soda. I think most people played it. Jelly. You guys know it. this is the third sequel of, uh, of Candy Crush. And these are the games that we've launched on the platform. Papa Perisaga is a shooter. And then we have a, uh, a resource management game called Paradise Bay. And Baba Witch is another shooter from one of our big franchises. And then a card game. Card game is interesting because, you know, card is a natural game being on Windows. You've always had it. Uh, basically, it's casual games, but we have four subgenres live on Windows 10. We have Match 3, we have bubble shooters, we have resource management, and we have card games. And that's the big question, right? We're committed to continue, so you will see new games coming up on the platform. So, something that we you know, I think is interesting is you know how the platform has been performing, but most importantly, what, what's going to happen in the future? And if it's 600 million active users today, you know that's not too far. It's I think within two and a half year the platform been up there. So with all the the devices around the world, it's probably going to reach a billion fairly soon. And we expect the platform to grow, but we also expect King and our games to go with the platform. But what we also believe is that if we make efforts and work hard together with you guys in Microsoft to do the best possible that we can, we have a possibility to improve our outcome on the platform. And we also believe that with our success and what we've done, we can also help the ecosystem to grow for Microsoft. So we believe that you know, we, we really have a good synergy in this. And we believe that you know, gaming companies and gamifying desktop and Windows 10 will help the whole ecosystem to really potentially grow to something extremely big. And I think this is the main thing that I want to tell you guys today, that you know, we can work together to really grow this ecosystem. So coming back to you know, the first slides, we believe in this. We believe in working with Windows 10. We think it's a huge opportunity for our games to grow and to help uh, Microsoft to grow the, the ecosystem of Windows 10. 600 million active users today. 
it's a big number. It's really a big number. And then, as I mentioned, it's about preparing for the future because you never know how many more devices that will be added. Will there be a mobile version? Will there be you know, smaller versions of surfaces that you know, is actually the same as a mobile version? And what is a mobile device of, of the future? So that's pretty much what I wanted to share with you today. So I said thank you. And if we have any questions, will you take that? Yeah, it's a tool. I don't know if it's still around, actually. It was in 2014. And I, I, my coders told me that, you know, if you really want to sound like a techie guy, you should tell them that it was called OpenGL. And it was the, 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 um, the way we did it was called Angle. But it, is it any, anyone taking here from Microsoft that would be able to pick up that, on that question? But it's a very simple tool. But I say today with Windows 10, it's actually quite easy to just get the apps to native. So I, I'd probably do that instead. There was a converter that we used for some time to, to help move iOS apps with Windows 10. Yeah. I don't think it was developed. OK, thank you, guys. Good to be here with you.